Welcome back again guys, it is Maximus here with you today, thank you for joining me, we're going back to talking about some firearms, and yes, we are talking about Russian equipment again, so those of you who get very upset by my talking of Russian equipment a lot lately, please feel free to hit the dislike and leave, because this gun really does deserve a little bit of respect in terms of machine gun fire support. Yes, we are talking about the PK series of general purpose machine guns from the Russian Federation and the Soviet Union back in the day. Um, the Soviet designed PK series of light machine guns was pretty much the primary support weapon of most uh, Russian forces back in the day and uh, unfortunately insurgents today have been using them quite extensively against Western forces during the War on Terror and obviously many other conflicts around the world. It's ranking among one of the best in its class in terms of machine gun capabilities in the world. Hands down guys, uh, I've never fired one but I can't wait until the day I can. I'm sure it's not going to be much different different in comparison to, you know, say a GPMG, but I really do want to fire one and I'm really looking forward to the day I get the chance to. They've held a distinction since their late appearance in the early 1960s. Supremely reliable, very hardy, and overall deadly. They will remain the most widespread light machine gun for many years to come around the world, guys. Uh, the capability of this gun is continually being upgraded, like most firearms from the Russian world, and even, you know, the American world. You know, a lot of old guns are starting to be brought back into the spotlight again, and this gun is continually being upgraded. There's some new uh, updated weapons platforms, as you saw at the start of this video, some of the footage showing some of the different configurations they're looking into placing this gun. But the basis of the gun is pretty much the same. There's not really much that is changed for the basic principle of the machine gun. Uh, and this is a testament to its creator, Russia's most famous arms designer, Mikhail Kalashnikov. Yes, we all know of him. Some relate to him as being the number one killer of people in the world, but this is absolute ridiculousness. At the end of the day, he produced a firearm, and the fact that it has been used by insurgents and terrorists and all that sort of stuff around the world does not depict him as being this mass murderer. Uh, he was an engineer, a brilliant engineer, and produced a very good product. And overall, that's where I stand on it. And rest in peace, good sir. Um, you produced a fantastic firearm, and to this day, still being utilized. Um, so good for him. So after World War II, the Soviet Union reviewed the German weapons that had been slaughtering them, especially the beautiful MG42 light machine gun, which, once again, I will be doing a future video of. Realizing a good thing when they had it, the Soviets actually latched onto the general purpose machine gun concept, or GPMG. This weapon was intended to fill both the role of a heavy machine gun, which usually contained a very bulky water jacket around the barrel for sustained firing to keep the barrel cool, and a light machine gun. So they were looking for the in-between, the sweet spot, which the Germans did very, very well. It featured a quick change air-cooled barrel, which is key to firing long bursts or engagements that take quite a bit of time and quite a bit of ammunition to keep them suppressed. Of course, like most things, we learned a lot of things from the Germans back in the Second World War, as did uh, the Russians uh, take a lot from them in terms of design and features, uh, and, you know, not even design and features, but more the principle of what they were doing. And uh, the MG42 really did show the true concept of replacing both a feasible, highly effective heavy machine gun and a light machine gun compromise. It was like the really good sweet spot. Therefore, the Soviets, just as they did with the assault rifle concept, pioneered by their enemy, sought out a new way to make their own version of the general purpose machine gun. Their first try, the RP-46, was an evolution of the war-era DP-28. Instead of the unique pan-fed magazine of the DP, which we all know looks like a giant metallic disc on top of the gun, it featured a belt-fed ability, which throughout the war had only really resided in heavy tripod or wheeled versions of their machine guns, as you noticed as I did do a video on it recently with the Dushka machine gun. The RP-46 served for over a decade into the late 1950s before the army decided it wanted something better. Initially, some communist officials and generals would place their faith in the prototype LMG called the Nicotin. However, this weapon's development proceeded at a very sluggish pace. So in order to spur creativity, the army ordered Kalashnikov to build a competing design against it. His submission competed with the Nicotin, winning the trials and receiving a very, very capable PK, or Pilmet Kleshnikova, in 1961 designation. The Nicotin, for all its promise, pretty much faded into history, unfortunately. The PK featured Kalashnikov's favorite traits, reliability first and foremost, which is very standard on most Russian firearms and equipment nowadays. I mean, a lot of people say Russian equipment's so unreliable, so much junk. I have to disagree, and it depends on what we're talking about, and that's another 
discussion for another day. But overall, when we're talking about Russian firearms, they do pretty good in the reliability sector, and I'm sure most of you know of the AK-47 and its reliability through the ages. The next thing was durability and then simplicity. Accuracy was good as well with the 7.6254R round uh, and the weapon was designated really as a support weapon. It wasn't designed to engage accurately, it was there to spray the enemy with as much firepower as possible and support assaulting troops going forward. Its aesthetic features were skeletonized wood stocks mated with a stamped receiver where a wooden pistol grip was attached. Very primitive, very simple and worked just fine. A tangent sight graduated to 1500 meters sat atop the cover, which could mount optics if necessary, and opening this cover allowed to place one of the disintegrating belt linked, which fed from left to right. If need be, a hundred rounds stored in a rectangular steel box, which is normally the iconic steel box we see on the day-to-day -day video games and movies, could be affixed to the gun's underside, and often was. However, the one problem that we tend to find with these types of machine guns is there is a very difficult spot to actually hold onto if you're in a uh, dismounted, walking around, patrolling uh, position. At the end of the day, the gun really isn't designed to be fired from the hip, you should be in the prone position or from a stable platform, but it has come to be that sometimes you will come across an engagement where you will need to stand and engage and holding the box magazine actually sometimes caused some problems with trying to feed that belt into the machine gun which is why future variations of this gun have tried to address a better stable more reliable area to which you can actually hold onto at the front of the firearm to engage targets if you came under contact. In terms of functionality, the PK mirrored the AK-47's piston operation, albeit with a thicker and heavier part system and an open bolt firing for added cooling, which basically means, guys, that this thing is going to be firing a lot more ammunition in a longer pace than it would be the AK-47, so they beefed it up a little bit. I'm a big fan of piston-operated firearms, of course, the L85A2 and my previously owned PWS Mark 116. I love piston-operated guns. Uh, with a machine gun, piston is the way to go for sure. Uh, a lot more repeatable when it comes to uh, having to adjust your gas settings and you know uh, have a nice stable platform to be able to rely on when putting a lot of rounds down the chamber. The cocking handle was on the right side below the after the feed entrance and pressing the trigger caused the gun to chug along at a respectable 650 rounds per minute. Overall very very impressive uh, being able to put that much firepower down range. We're not talking about you know Hitler's buzzsaw with the MG42 rate of fire but still enough to really cause some devastation down range. Four versions entered production of this firearm. These were the standard PK, the PKS, which was a tripod mounted gun, the PKT, which was tank mounted, and the PKB for armored cars, which ended up as door guns in the MI8 HIP and the MI24 helicopters, which I have done a video on in the past. In keeping with Soviet philosophy, the PK spread all over the communist world in the 60s and was licensed and produced by several countries. Once it appeared on the battlefield, notably in Vietnam in the Middle East, it proved one of the best general purpose machine guns in existence, the other being the FN Herstal's mag which was heavier and more expensive. As if so often the case with a great weapon system, as we all know, improvements followed over the years and in 1969 the Ultimate PK, the M or modernized series emerged to replace its predecessor. The PKM is still in production and is still one of the finest machine guns in the world. It is improved on the PK in different areas, one being an over 3 pound reduction to weight to 16.5 pounds overall, and a slightly shorter length of the firearm overall is about half an inch, as well as a half inch shorter barrel. This is the current and most widely available model seen in the War on Terror and places like Libya, Sierra Leone, you know, Syria. It's just a very common weapons platform today that tends to get shared around. Of course, most of these guns nowadays are even being upgraded further. Uh, Special Forces of Russia uh, are looking into trying to improve them concurrently into new service packages. The latest influence of the PKM in Russia is the PKP. This design, a squad automatic weapon or saw, replaces the previous variants that were nothing more than a long barrel AKM called the RPK and the AK-74 called the RPK-74. The Pesheng, as it is nicknamed, looks similar to the PKM but has a fixed barrel with a radial fins for cooling and weighs 19 pounds. It entered service in 2001 and is currently at work heavily in Ukraine, obviously. At its core, the PKP remains a gas-operated machine gun system capable of fully automatic fire while being fed by a way of 100, 200 or 250 round belt magazines held in a hard box under the receiver. 
It retains the use of the 7.62x54R cartridge seen in the PK or PKM and features a rate of fire reaching 600 to 800 rounds per minute, which was a little bit of improvement over the PKM series. Muzzle velocity of the gun is 2,700 feet per second, while effective range reaches up to 1,500 meters, which was very standard. Outwardly, the PKP showcases a workmanlike appearance with a solid, rectangular receiver in an all-black finish. As you can see, the protruding carrying handle to remove the barrel is not on this firearm anymore. Instead, it is a carrying handle that is recessed into the gun as a standard plate platform. This has a couple of disadvantages to what I can see. Uh, it looks like it would graze your blimmin' knuckles off when trying to shoot this thing. It looks like the tolerances and clearances for your hands to get in between that handle are very tight. And if you're looking at shooting this thing for prolonged periods of time, potentially standing on patrols, it looks like it will grind your skin off your knuckles. But, uh, you know, I don't know, it just looks a little tight in there, it looks a little uncomfortable. Um, unlike the other guns, the PKP does not feature a quick change barrel facility for the field management of hot barrels. Instead, the assembly is designed with a forced air, air-cooled arrangement, basically allowing the gun to cool itself a lot more efficiently. Uh, I don't know how much uh, I'm pro for this, it's something that, you know, I think all heavy or slash uh, medium machine guns should have as an interchangeable barrel. It's very, very handy to have, but you know, maybe they do have something that is a lot better for this gun to cool it down. The final configuration in this gun is the Peshtneg, I'm going to try my best to say that, Bullpup, which is a reworked form of the gun to a Bullpup configuration, retaining its full length barrel and containing the action magazine feed to the rear of the trigger group. The Peshtneg 2 is considered an improved based on the original Peshtneg model and is currently in development phase since 2014. As you can see, this Bullpup design is very different to what we're seeing on the standard PK design, but Honestly, it looks very, very strange. It looks like an almost futuristic type gun. Uh, it's but ugly in my eyes, but maybe if it's doing the job better, then why not? Uh, I know a lot of people don't like the bullpup design. I must admit I'm very triggered by seeing that uh, belt coming in at an angle, but I don't think it makes much effect on these guns at the end of the day. They could probably fire a thousand rounds at that angle and have absolutely no problem. And this Russian bruiser looks like it could literally tear my head off, so I don't think I'm going to say much more about uh, this gun without saying it's positives anymore. Uh, but something interesting to see, you know, you don't really see much of the more modern style Russian equipment coming into the showcase, into the media spotlight, so it is nice to see. Um, overall, guys, I have a lot of respect for this gun. It has seen many, many uh, conflicts around the world, in inclusive of conflicts against myself. Uh, many times have I seen uh, insurgents in Afghanistan putting these things downrange onto us. Uh, so, yes, I have respect for it, but at the same instance, I do appreciate the fact that it did try and potentially kill me and my buddies. Uh, but, you know, that is what it is, and that's not something against the firearm itself. You know, it's clearly a very well-made design and still being utilized uh, as a, a chief design of medium machine guns for the Russian military right now. Will we see an even more improved design? Who knows? I mean, this bullpup design is definitely a little funky. I know there's new designs coming in, as you can see here, with the uh, belt fed from the backpack design. Different kind of setup completely. I don't know how I feel about that kind of design. It seems a little impractical to create more weight to carry ammunition to feed. Um, but, you know, that's designs that have been coming into the US too. They've been looking into that kind of platform. But yes, a very well-respected gun, and I hope you enjoyed today's video, folks. Please leave me a like and a comment. Let me know what you think about this gun. I hope to God I get to fire it one day. Uh, and if you have fired it, let me know what you think of it, uh, your opinions, your uh, you know review of it, and if you think if it's a good or a bad firearm. I'd love to hear your you know your opinion on this. And uh, if you want to support my channel, guys, feel free to go check out my Patreon account. Uh, any donations there is much appreciated, and thank you in advance. Hope you have a wonderful day, guys. Take care, and bye-bye.